Hi folks, um, just put this video together just to show you how you can use uh, GPT-3 um, to classify keywords. So I'm just going to explain the use case for that. Um, and I'm also going to make a, a copy of the sheet and script available to you. And I'll give you instructions in this video of how you can uh, go about using that yourself uh, and play around with it. So uh, first of all, just to kind of explain the use case. So imagine you're doing some keyword research. So you go and use a, a keyword tool like Ahrefs, Keywords Explorer. Um, and, you know, you want to be as thorough as possible. So you put in a term and then you find all the search queries that include that term um, in, in the keyword. Um, now, one of the problems I often find when I'm doing that is that when it comes up with a whole list of keywords, um, a lot of them are just not relevant to the site that you're working on um, because very often um, the, the term or the, or the word that you've put in there um, is in a different context to, um, to the subject of the website. Um, so as an example of that, um, I recently was doing some research uh, for a law firm and we were looking for topics uh, to create content around conspiracy offences. So there's a number of different offences um, such as conspiracy to murder, conspiracy to defraud, those kind of things uh, where people collude together uh, to commit an offence. Um, but when you put um, conspiracy into a keyword tool, you're going to get a whole load of junk um, because you've got things like JFK assassination conspiracy. Uh, you've got things like um, uh, what else we got here? UFO conspiracies, all kinds of random conspiracies that people search for on Google, which obviously don't have a legal context and aren't useful um, to this particular website. Um, so what I really want to do is get all of this long list of keywords classified as either uh, having a legal context or a non-legal context. Um, so, um, so just to kind of show you here um, uh, how this works. So basically, um, I've got my keyword data here. I've got the keywords in the first column. Um, I've got a column I've just created here called classification, you can call it whatever you like. Um, and then I've got keyword difficulty, um, which I generally don't pay too much attention to, and volume. But you can have whatever data you want in the sheet here. Um, and then uh, all I've got to do is just in this uh, cell here, you just call the function. So it's called equals get GPT-3 and then open up the brackets and then just reference the cell here that you want to classify. So I'm going to put in cell A2 and then we close the brackets and then press return. And then you'll see it does a kind of little loading thing for a second and then comes back um, and says that that's a legal context. And you can see it's pretty quick. Um, uh, I've also just added a little bit of conditional formatting on here. So if it does come back, uh, with the response of legal, then it also just kind of fills that in in green, which just makes it easier to identify these. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is just then copy the formula down to all the other rows that you uh, want to classify. So we're just going to select that cell, control C, and then um, copy that down, control V, and then you'll see it does a little load, and then it comes back. Um, and you should find that that is uh, pretty accurate if we have a look here. Um, so we've got conspiracy to fraud, that's a legal term, fraud conspiracy, legal term, conspiracy to murder, consp conspiracy charge, yes, conspiracy COVID, non-legal, JFK assassination conspiracy, non-legal. So you can see the results are pretty accurate. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if the, the alternative to this would be to uh, get someone to go through the list, maybe hire a VA or something to go through the list, doing this for thousands of keywords. Um, and my experience is that uh, GPT-3 actually comes back with uh, these results uh, faster, um, uh, cheaper, um, and also they are more accurate. Uh, very often, if you're working with a VA, particularly if they're in another country, they're not going to necessarily understand the context of all these different terms. Um, so now, how can you do this yourself? Um, so, uh, well, the very first thing you want to do is just go and uh, open an account um, 
on the OpenAI website. So that's openai.com. Um, so just go and register an account there. Um, there is no cost to doing that. Um, and once you've registered an account, you want to then go and get your API key. Um, so once you're logged in, just click on here and then go to view API keys. I'll show you API keys. And then um, it will then have here your secret key. You just click copy and that will copy the API key to your clipboard. So just go and save that somewhere um, in, in Notepad or in a document somewhere because you're going to need that um, in a little bit. Um, so once you've done that, um, I am then going to uh, share in uh, in this post. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a link to the Google Sheet. And so you just put that into your browser and it will immediately ask you, um, would you like to make a copy of the document? So click make a copy. Um, now I have um, provided uh, pretty uh, detailed instructions in the sheet. Um, so you shouldn't need to watch this video while you're doing it because hopefully they're fairly clear, but I'll just run through it in this video for you. Um, so you've got two sheets within this workbook. The first one, the first sheet here is settings. Um, and I would advise that you don't mess around with this sheet too much. Uh, don't start changing the column headings or reordering them because that's likely to break it. Um, and then the script will probably just start returning errors. So don't mess around with this sheet too much. Um, the other sheet is this one here, keywords. You can do what you like with this. So um, yeah, you can change the column headings and, and add whatever data that you want in here. So let me just uh, show you this process. So. Um, so back in the settings sheet, uh, the first step to this is to go and put your uh, API key here. Um, so let me just go and copy that and then put the API key in there. Um, and then in uh, this cell here, which is B2, this is the prompt. So this is where you kind of describe to GPT-3 how you want to have these keywords classified. Um, so, you know, I've put here classify the keyword according to whether it relates to a legal concept or a non-legal concept, but you could put anything here. Um, I mean, uh, another example uh, that I used, I'll just show you here. Um, I was doing some work with um, WWF, who are the uh, World Wildlife Fund. And we were going through a whole load of keywords and trying to work out whether they were branded terms or non-branded terms. Uh, the only problem with that is that um, WW, WWF has more than one meaning because it's also the World Wrestling Federation. And so there was a lot of junk keywords that had nothing to do with uh, wildlife coming up in there. So um, that was another thing we used to classify it, uh, uh, used for this, is to distinguish between those relating to wildlife and those relating to wrestling. Um, so there's all kinds of different uh, applications that you could use this for, uh, not necessarily just legal or the ones that I've chosen here. So put in a description of how you want the terms, the keywords to be classified. Um, and then you just need to give it some examples. So you're kind of training the model uh, to show it what are uh, right answers here. So uh, in total, you'll see there's four examples. Um, so all you need to do is just give it some, uh, you know, in this case, we're choosing legal or non-legal. Um, so I've put in here, you know, example keyword one, conspiracy theories, that's non-legal. Example keyword two, canon conspiracy, it's non-legal. Example keyword three, conspiracy to murder, that is legal. Example keyword four, assault conspiracy, uh, and that is legal. And generally those four examples should be enough uh, to train the model. Now, if you have... Um, a use case where um, it's there's a possibility that the classification is not binary. So, um, you know, it could be, there could be three different options, or maybe um, there may, well, in fact, the WWF example that I showed you before, um, we actually had three different responses because there were some keywords that were relevant to both contexts. Um, uh, for example, both uh, the, the, one of the keywords was WWF shop, and that was relevant both to wrestling and also to uh, the World Wildlife Fund. So if you have those, uh, you know, if you have 
more than a binary option, then include an example of that and how you want it to respond uh, for each of those. Um, and then all you have to do uh, once you've set this all up, so just to kind of go through that again, you've got your API key here, you've got your prompt here, um, and then four key four examples of keywords and their classifications. And then um, pop over to the keyword sheet um, and then put in your list of keywords here. So let me just get some examples. Um, so we'll take my legal ones. Oh, that'll be enough. There we go. And we just, whoops, pop those into here. There we are. Um, and if you want to, you can add search volumes there. I'm not going to bother here. And then in the classification column here, we just reference that cell. So we're going to go equals get GPT-3 and then open brackets and then A2, close the brackets and you should find that that works pretty well. And then obviously you can copy it, uh, copy that formula down to uh, as many cells as you want. Um, now this sheet here, as I say, um, you can pretty much do what you want with this because you're just using uh, a formula. So you can put that in anywhere. Um, one thing I would say is um, before you start running this on thousands of keywords, um, I strongly recommend that you test it on small sample batches first um, because you don't want to burn through your API credits um, if, uh, if it's going to need some tweaking. Um, and do also um, go and have a look at the, uh, the prompt and experiment with this because the wording you use here, that's essentially, uh, this is essentially how you're, you're programming it with just plain English language. So, you know, the words you choose in this prompt will uh, likely have um, uh, uh, an impact on the quality of the results that you get. So, you know, do, do play around with that. Um, when you open an account with OpenAI, they do give you $18 worth of free API credits. And you should find um, that that um, is going to uh, be sufficient for doing quite a lot of uh, keyword classifications um, because it's only returning, um, you know, one word or two word response. It doesn't go through that many credits. So, um, but yeah, do obviously do keep an eye on the number of credits you're using. So you can start this off. Don't put any money into it at all. Just use the free credits and then see how you get on. Um, but I would really like to hear from you. I'd like to know um, what use cases you find for this and, um, and uh, let me know if uh, you have any questions. All right. Hope that's clear. Bye now.